Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Houston Sports Weekly, our weekly podcast here on KPRC2+. Plus. Click to Houston.com. And, of course, all things Houston sports tied to KPRC Channel 2. I'm sports director Randy McAvoy. Wanted to check in as the new episode uh, drops uh, this morning. It's all things Texans. That, that's going to be the focus of this week's podcast. And uh, we're excited about that because they have a new head coach. That would be one D'Amico Ryans. Ryans, the former Texans player, former Texans linebacker that was drafted back in 2006. Played here through 2011. Uh, a great run in Houston, an impactful run during some pretty good years, actually, for the Texans before he left and uh, finished with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, D'Amico was beloved in this city by the fan base, uh, by his teammates, by the coaching staff, everyone in the organization, and now he is coming back home. And that's what we're going to talk about on this week's episode. We're going to hear from D'Amico Ryans himself, uh, a lot from his news conference. If you missed it, we want to be able to bring that to you and uh, kind of let you listen for yourself on his expectations, what he thinks for uh, coming about coming back home, the homecoming, his wife is from here, just a whole list of things. He called this his dream job. He's going to touch on that a little bit as well. But uh, hiring D'Amico was great for this organization. This has been, frankly, a struggle over the last few years, uh, a very dysfunctional organization, and uh, things had to change. And the team has been criticized for the one-and-dones for David Coley, uh, also for Lovey Smith, one year in uh, coaching change which was made. Now, uh, the teams have struggled. I think a coaching change, a new identity was needed, and uh, that's exactly what they're getting with D'Amico Ryan. So shout out to team owner Cal McNair, Hannah McNair. They were very involved, obviously, in this whole process, as was general manager Nick Casario and everybody else on that committee. Uh, they did their due diligence uh, in this process, and really had some good good candidates, uh, but they decided on who would lead best right now, who wowed them the most, and that was hands down uh, D'Amico Ryans. You heard a little bit today at the news conference, and it says we're taping this to you. We're wrapping up a busy Thursday uh, at NRG Stadium, and uh, man, it was really cool to hear the things said by everyone there. We were at a reception before the news conference even took place, and had a chance to speak with Cal and Hannah McNair and many others, Greg Grissom, the Texans president. Uh, nothing but just a glowing report on D'Amico Ryans and how he wowed everybody in his interview, his first interview. Now, it was done via Zoom. And even Casario said today, after that Zoom, everybody kind of looked at each other like, man, this, this might be our guy here. I mean, that's how impressive he was. He came in with a plan. He came in uh, with a mission on how he would uh, oversee things, uh, build this roster, work in tandem with Nick Casario. And uh, that's going to happen. They've got a, seem, appears to be a great relationship. Uh, they respect one another. And now D'Amico Ryans has the keys to this organization as the head coach, the sixth head coach in franchise history. And, uh, you know, will it take time? Probably will. I don't see them immediately turning things around in one year, but I do expect progress uh, with what he's going to instill in these players in the attacking style of defense that they will play with D'Amico Ryans in charge. And he would not commit today on will he call the defensive plays. He's going to hire a defensive coordinator, but we all know D'Amico Ryans is a defensive genius, and I think he is going to still call the shots but that role will be defined. It's just not finalized yet. Uh, they've been interviewing offensive coordinator candidates. In fact, uh, my look at my schedule. I think Wednesday, yesterday, they interviewed three, I believe. And uh, he, that's all while he was traveling back and forth from California. So uh, he's rolled up his sleeves. He's, he's getting to work since he got the job on Tuesday. And uh, that work is not going to slow down. A lot of evaluation of talent on this uh, Texans roster to find out who can help them moving forward on the, both the offensive and defensive uh, side of the football. And it, it feels like they're not far off, and I probably agree. Now, the record doesn't show it, wins and losses, obviously, but they were in a lot of football games and couldn't close the deal. 
Uh, I think he and his staff will help get these guys over the hurdle in some of those. And I think we're going to see some progress uh, from the get-go, and hopefully it'll show up in the win column. If not, give it time. They've got a six-year contract for D'Amico. They're going to trust him to put his system in place, have his staff in place. They're going to build through the draft. They've got a great cap situation. They can. Uh, they got a lot of money to spend. They can build it with free agency. So look out and see what they can do. All right, so uh, we're going to keep this podcast this week simple because we want you to hear from everybody involved out at NRG Stadium. So we're going to start with uh, some of the opening comments. You're going to hear from Cal McNair, a little bit from Nick Casario, mainly, though, from head coach, new head coach, Yes, it sounds weird. Head coach, D'Amico Ryans, 06-11, one of the greatest players I've seen, pro bowler, uh, war number 59 proudly. Now uh, Kenan Green wears that number, so they've got some negotiating to find out if he's going to continue to wear it or not now that his new coach used to wear it. We're going to let you guys uh, listen in for yourself now, listen in to D'Amico Ryans, a little bit from GM Nick Casario, and owner Cal McNair. Check it out. It's my honor to introduce you to the Texans' new head coach, D'Amico Ryans. (laughs) Finished our search. Uh, Nick did a great job. Thank you, Nick. We worked together. Um, This young man exhibited everything we wanted as far as leadership, football knowledge, led uh, one of the top defenses for the last two years, and he fits exactly what we're looking for to lead our team into the future. And I'm not the first to say, but let me say it now, welcome you and your family to (laughs) H-Town. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, First of all, I'd like to thank Cal and Anna for their support throughout this process. And... And the reality is football is a people business. That's the reality of it, right? We're going to win with people. And what better person to lead this organization, to lead this team, to lead these players than D'Amico Ryan. So I think everything that D'Amico exudes as a player, we exhibit as a player, he's done as a coach, his leadership, his selflessness, his toughness, his team first mindset, his charisma. And I would say we didn't really know each other, but the more and more time we spent together, it was almost a no-brainer is that who was the right fit for this team, this organization, this city. He's one of our own. He believes in our program. He's been in this building. He's been in our players' shoes. He's been in this city. And for him to come home, for him to give us the opportunity to be a partner with him, certainly grateful and appreciative and can't wait to get started and can't wait to work, uh, get to work together. So thanks, D'Amico. I would like to start by first thanking my family. Uh, couldn't be here without the sacrifices that you know they endured for me to have the opportunity to coach. And I know everything that they've been through, and I'm just so thankful for my family, first and foremost, for being here with me. Uh, I would like to thank the, the 49ers organization for giving me the opportunity right, to grow as a coach, as a man. It was just outstanding. Six years there, Kyle. Uh, the York family, John Lynch, and all the coaches, all the players that I had the opportunity to work with there. It was a special group, and I'll be forever grateful to those men who allowed me to coach them and lead them over the past six years. And now here with the Texans, I can't thank you enough. Kyle, all right, Nick, can't thank you guys enough for believing in me, right, to give me this opportunity to lead the Texans, the team that drafted me here in 2006, I mean, this is just, it's a surreal moment for me. And I'm, I'm thankful, thankful to God that he's just paved the way for me through everything that I've been through in life and for my paths to end back up here in my home in H-Town where it all started. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a truly, it's, it's a blessing that, um, uh, it's still, you know, it's still for me, I'm still trying to believe it, <laughs> right? But it's, it's outstanding, man, to all my former players, all right, my former teammates that are here. And it's great to see all you guys here, right? The work we all put in together here 
it means so much to me just to see you guys here, see your faces. Man, for the support you guys have given me, it's been it's been outstanding. I love you guys. Love you guys so much. Thank you for your support. Uh, to the players that are here, the current players, man, I can't wait to get started. I can't wait to get started with you guys, man. I'm fired up, right? This this is a young team, right? We we're on the cusp, right? We got to add some pieces to what we're doing here, but I'm so excited to get started and get to work with you young guys, right? And to build a winning program here with the Texans. And yeah, I'm fired up. The excitement is real, and I can't wait to get to work to get to coaching. All right, that's we want to bring a winning. All right, a winning team. That's what we want to bring to Houston. We want to bring you guys a team that you're going to be proud of as fans, right? We want to fill up NRG Stadium, and we want you guys to make this truly a home field advantage for us again, right? All the excitement that we have right now, I'm excited, I'm fired up, and our fans, we want to continue that excitement and supporting the team that we have here. Everything with me and Nick, we're here to build this thing together, build it the right way with the right people. Right, build it the right way with the right people. And what we're looking for, what I'm looking for, and the type of players that we're looking for is players, right, who are looking to swarm. Right? We want players who have a, a special work ethic and a relentless mindset in everything that they do. Right? That's how that's what you're gonna see from Texans football. Right? You're gonna see fast, you're gonna see physical, you're gonna see toughness, but most of we want smart players who truly are dedicated to being the best that they wanna be and guys who are coachable and guys who want to go win. And that's what we want to do. We want to do it in a first-class manner. We're going to do it the right way. And I'm excited and fired up to get started with you guys. All right, so great stuff there. A little chunk of the news conference from Thursday. We've got much more coming up. And we're also going to hear from some of his former teammates as well. This is Houston Sports Weekly Podcast every week on KPRC2+. Plus. And click to Houston.com. We are rolling along, I believe. Don't hold me to it. This might be episode 29 or 30 now. So we're starting to build these things up and build a nice following on these as well. So we'll take a break. We'll be right back with more Texans coverage here on Houston Sports Weekly. Hi, everybody. We're back on Houston Sports Weekly. That first segment, uh, we dove right into the uh, Texans situation. If you missed it on Thursday, a great day there at NRG Stadium as the Texans uh, welcomed in their new head coach, the sixth head coach in franchise history. That would be D'Amico Ryans. Really cool. As you saw, everybody kind of filed their way into the stadium yesterday. Uh, it was a different feel, no doubt about it, at NRG, because it's a situation where they're turning the page right now, and they're going back to what they hope is the good old days. They're bringing back D'Amico Ryans, a guy – that uh, was a great player and then decided to jump into the coaching ranks. A lot of guys don't do that when they've made a lot of money. They've got the great life. You know, they just move on with their life. But he is passionate about coaching football. He is passionate, as you heard him a little bit there in the first segment here on the podcast, about, uh, you know, working with young men on and off the field and pushing them to reach new heights when it comes to uh, progress on the football field and making plays. It's uh, teaching them to be uh, great husbands and fathers, everything that's a part of that. That's what D'Amico Ryans is. He had some great things to say about his family, uh, his uh, beautiful wife, his kids were there. His mother made the trip as well. It was a really cool scene on Thursday to see all this unfold and to, and to hear from uh, those that are closest to him. And yeah, I asked him in a one-on-one, -on -one, which you'll hear a little bit of as well, about you know what it meant to, to show up in there and then also uh, look out in the crowd and see all of these former teammates he had here in Houston. Uh, many came out to support him. I mean, I saw Travis Johnson, uh, Chester Pitts, Wade Smith, Andre Johnson. Uh, I'm uh, uh, who am I missing here? I'm at, at Garrett Graham, former tight end. Um, oh, uh, Owen Daniels, I believe, was there as well. Uh, we heard many uh, guys step up and really say great things uh, about their former teammate in D'Amico Ryans. And um, it was really, really cool to see. And 
Uh, the fact they would take time out of their day to be there uh, meant a lot, I know, to D'Amico Ryans. It meant a lot to uh, team owner Cal McNair, Hannah McNair, President Greg Grissom. They all showed up to offer support. Also there were current players as well, and uh, you know that was really nice to see. There were probably 10 or 12 players, I think, that made it out. I saw Titus Howard, John Weeks, uh, uh, many others out there. Another former player, by the way, that was there was uh, Jonathan Joseph. And uh, I know I'm missing players right now, but I uh, saw a bunch of them. It was really, really great to see. But we're going to listen in now to uh, more reaction. It's going to be a kind of a mix between the press conference, uh, interviews as well with some of the former players, and also my one-on-one with uh, D'Amico Ryans as well. So we're going to listen in uh, to some of that right now as you get more insight into um, – what D'Amico Ryans is all about and what he brings to the table as he takes over as head coach of the Houston Texans. So listen in, enjoy the conversation in case you missed it uh, from Thursday over at NRG Stadium as the Texans welcome in the sixth head coach in franchise history. That would be D'Amico Ryans. He calls it a dream job. He's fired up to be here He's ready to lead this organization and these group of players. So listen in right now. What I say to um, all the people uh, back in Bessemer is, you know, whatever you dream, if you believe it, you you definitely can achieve that. Right? All dreams can come true, and that's what you see here today. This is a dream of mine, and it's coming true. And whatever anybody, any of us, whatever we dream, we believe, it, we can make it happen by putting in the work. By hard work, by sacrifice, you can make it happen. And from the other coaches, from coaching, right? It's you know, it's always been important to me. It, it really for coaching. It kind of I got inspired from coaching back in college. My college coach Joe, Coach uh, Joe Kynes, he really inspired me. One day he put me on the spot in front of the room and he asked me to make some calls and thought I knew what everybody else around me was supposed to do and I didn't know and. At that moment, I was like, wow, I need to make sure I know what everybody around me, what their job is and how I fit into this puzzle. So if he's trusting me to call on me, he believes that there's something in me and maybe I could be in the coach's shoes. And from that inspiration from Joe Kynes, it led me to truly knowing what every position around me, knowing what they had to do, all their assignments and techniques. So if a guy needed help, I could help him out. And that's where that inspiration from coaching started. You know, I think the league now is going to a place where you have to have a guy who can, you know, relate to players, develop players, create those, you know, relationship with players, and have the belief of the players. And I think D'Amico is the guy for that. Andre, it's been a, it's been a couple of, it's been a few um, tough years for this franchise. The fans are kind of, maybe they've lost a few fans. Do you feel like? D'Amico is the person who can turn things around and get this team back to where it needs to be? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, I feel like he's the guy for the job. Um, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, I don't think anybody can come in and build this overnight, but um, if, it, if it's a guy for the job, it's D'Amico Ryan. A lot of people thought this franchise needed a jolt of some sort. Yeah. I think you got that today. Yeah, I think you definitely got it. Um, I mean, just like I said, just looking at the press conference, I mean, you see how many former players were here. Um, you know, you had Bumby here, Trey the Truth here, like, you had even, you know, just guys from the community who, uh, you know, this organization means a lot to that uh, showed up for this press conference. So um, I think we got the joke that we needed. Um, you know, like I said, even D'Amico said, Nick said it, you know, it's still a lot of work to do. But, uh, you know, it's an exciting day today. So. We're going to enjoy today, but, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll get back to work tomorrow and, you know, get things headed in the right direction. Him, him playing here, um, him being drafted here, he knows what the, the city, he knows what the organization is capable of. Um, I think if anyone can do it, it's, it's going to be him. All right, so he, he knows the potential there. He's seen the, the, the packed NRG stadiums, the playoff games, and, and when we were really rolling. And I know his dream for it is to be there and beyond, right? So um, it's one of those deals where a guy comes in, you're not going to find anyone more excited to coach the Houston Texans right now than him. So it's, uh, in my opinion, the perfect fit. I'll let our voice be heard. Not that you know we don't know how much it weighs, but at the same time, 
not an opportunity comes like this to have a guy available like D'Amico uh, the right point in time uh, with the opening going around and just, you know, with the young team that can grow with him in a situation that he can be successful in the future. Any, any, any way he can pull you out of retirement to become coach? Oh, definitely not as a player. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> definitely as a coach, though, right? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm always here for him. You know, any way I can help him out um, because that's the type of person he is. You know, you can never say no to a guy like that. Um, I was able to learn a lot from him because, like he said, I go and sit in those middle linebacker meetings and talk to those guys because when they run in crossing routes, those guys are my best friend and things like that. And it's just, you know, it's good to see a guy like him get an opportunity because I know the work he put in behind the scenes just to get to be a D coordinator, better yet a head coach. What stood out, to be honest with you, the whole thing stood out to me. Um, that was probably the most impressive interview I, I've, I've heard uh, ever, to, honestly. I'm not just saying because D'Amico's my friend, but everything he said, um, everything, just, just he, he, he gets it. He, he's he's going to be a heck of a head coach. He was a great coordinator. But uh, he's gonna, he's the right guy here, and he's gonna he's gonna help help this team, and it's gonna be fun to watch. As a uh, friend and former teammate, what was it like for you when you got the news that he was official? He was gonna take over as the lead man here in Houston. Oh, I was fired up. I was excited. I was uh, I, I texted him right away, and uh, this this is tell him just like he said. This you know a lot of guys are saying how proud proud of, of him, uh, how, how proud they are of him. Um, he's just he's just a class act. You know he's he's. He has every attribute you want as a player, but also as a, as a coach. And, uh, you know, he's a leader of men, and that's that's all you can ask for. Again, it, it feels familiar, right? Not just seeing him, but seeing the rest of those guys from from, from that era. Like, I don't know, man. It's really – I'm, I'm, I'm typically not a person that's lost for words. Um, but it really – this is Texas, right? Football is the heart and soul of Texas. And – we believe now that we have what we need in this locker room to change the culture. Um, we got great draft capital. We got cap room space. This team has everything it needs to make the right moves to go in a different direction. This is not a bad team. This team took great football teams all the way to the end of the game and into overtime. So it's not like this team isn't capable, but whatever this team was missing, we will have by opening day. I can see it in Cal's face, Hannah's excitement, Nick's ready to go. Everybody wants this right now. Being the OG from Houston, what did it mean for you to have a guy up there say, this was my dream job and wings of bring winning here to Houston? There's nothing that feels better when you can bring your accomplishments to home and home being a part of that accomplishment. As a recording artist, making my bones in the city of Houston, I wouldn't have been able to be successful in other places had I not been successful here and had the support of my hometown. D'Amico has that support. Now he just needs that success. It is sinking in, man. You, you called this your dream job. When did you know this was what needed to happen for you in the next step of your career? As just throughout the interview process, I was talking to the McNair family, talking to Nick, and just seeing how our visions align yeah. with the type of team that we wanted, how we wanted to build it. And it also adds a little extra <laughs> um, just because I yeah. was a former player here. Yeah. So that did add to it. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be any other place. Right? It's this mm -hmm. awesome place. H-Town is, is my home. So to be able to come back home and lead the franchise that I play for is uh, a very surreal moment and uh, yeah. excited to get started. You were in that room for that news conference. What did it mean for you to look out and see the alums, your former teammates, current players? What did that mean to you? Yeah, it meant everything. Right? To see yeah. the support that those guys have for me, former teammates, uh, it meant everything. It was emotional just being able to see a lot of those guys I haven't seen mm -hmm. you know, in a long time and for them to take the time out of you know, their busy schedules to come and support me. You know, it truly means a lot, and it just solidified even more that, man, I'm home, yeah. and this is the right place. All right, really good conversation from all of those guys, and again, shout out to uh, all the alums that showed up. Uh, it was really great to, to see those guys uh, uh, appear and show their support uh, for uh, D'Amico Ryans and, uh, you know, the fact the Texans are handing him the keys as the uh, new head coach of the Texans organization, but they all came out and showed uh, plenty of support. Kevin Walter, also a, a former wide receiver, was there as well. I meant to mention him a little while ago on my lead-in, but uh, it was really cool. A lot of smiles, 
a breath of fresh air inside the organization, and now it's time to get to work and hopefully put this D'Amico Ryan stamp on this organization as they work side by side with General Manager Nick Casario. All right, I uh, hope you enjoyed this week's Houston Sports Weekly podcast. A little bit different this week. Uh, we wanted to really spotlight what went down at NRG Stadium because many of you were working and maybe you didn't have the chance to listen in or watch our live stream of the news conference, but a fun day indeed at NRG Stadium, and many more of those days are ahead as the work begins in this offseason for the Texans. They'll evaluate talent that they've got. They'll evaluate college talent, free agent talent, the combines late in February, lots of stuff coming up as it all leads to the NFL draft coming up in late April. The Texans currently now owning the number two and number 12 overall pick. So then thanks for all the uh, support and all the guys out there at NRG for talking with us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Houston Sports Weekly Podcast. I'm Randy McAvoy. We will do it again next week, right here, same time, next Friday on KPRC2 Plus and click to Houston.com. So long for now.